Good morning, friends and neighbors, and welcome to Sound Bites with Bill Wood, a certified lay minister at St. Paul's United Methodist Church here in El Paso. And again, if you have any comments or questions, please send them to the St. Paul's email address, and they will be given to me for response. And also, if you have been blessed by these sound bites, send Pastor Amy an email and let her know. She would welcome your comments. So now please join me in prayer, and then I will read verses 11 through 22 of chapter 2 of Ephesians. Heavenly Father, again, I ask that you prepare our hearts and our minds to hear and to meditate on your word, and that these words might resonate within our spirit and cause us to be more inclusive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if you would, open your Bibles to the second chapter of Ephesians, and I will begin reading with verse 11. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, that done in the body by the hands of men, remember that at that time you were separated or you were separate from Christ excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenant of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by abolishing in his flesh the law with his commandments and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace, and in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near. Through for through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling place in which God lives by his spirit. So Paul in, the, in verses 11 and 12 is reminding the readers of this letter that they were Gentiles by birth, that is natural birth, and were called uncircumcised by those who called themselves the circumcision, which is something that is done to the body by the hands of men. He also reminds them that at that time they were separated from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenant of promise without hope and without God. Now what does mean, Paul mean by this? First of all, I think Paul is reminding them that because they were born outside the nation of Israel, they were not included as a member of God's chosen people. God's chosen people, the Jews, their male children were circumcised on the eighth day after birth, thus signifying that they were Jews. And this was done in accordance with their covenant with God. Because the Gentiles were outside the covenant, they were called the uncircumcised and were hated by the Jews simply because of where they were born. And as a result, there was a barrier between the two, between the Jew and the Gentile. And then second, Paul is reiterating that the Gentiles were separated from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenant of promise. They were without hope and without God. It has been said that the Jewish people, no matter how bad things seemed to be, that they always had hope. The promise of the coming Messiah. They believed that things would eventually be better. And on the other hand, the Gentiles had no such hope. It was a dismal future for them because they had no promise from their gods that there was even a future. For the Jews, their future was optimistic because of their belief in the coming Messiah, 
Their future was glorious. It was filled with hope. Then in verse 13, Paul says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who are once far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. And Paul is using terms that is very familiar to the Gentiles. The term far away meant that they were never a part of the Jewish nation. And the term have now been brought near could be or were included as members of the nation under certain circumstances. And Paul is saying that through the blood of Christ, at his death and resurrection and their accepting Christ, they are now included in the body of, of Christ. They're included in his church. They have been brought near. The barrier that separated the Jews and the Gentiles are now broken down, and they have all of the privileges in Christ that Paul spoke about in chapter 1. Then in verse 14 through 18, for he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandment and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace, and in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we, have, we both have access to the Father by the one Spirit. And so there in verse 17 where it says he came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near, that through Paul's preaching of the gospel to the Gentiles, they were once far away, but they now have been brought near. And then through Peter and the other apostles preaching to the Jews the gospel, then they too have been brought near to Christ. And so the two have, been, have access to the Father by the one Spirit of the Holy Spirit itself. Then in uh, back up in, in verse 14, Paul says that Christ's purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace. And I don't think Paul meant that literally, but they became one in spirit. Each of their spirits was recreated in the likeness of Christ. Thus, old things were passed away and all things became new. Then Paul con concludes this part of his teaching with verses 19 through 22, which reads, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. So, uh, I believe that in these verses, Paul means the same to us today as he did to the people back then. We are all members of the body of Christ, having accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior. We are fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, a member of the body of Christ. And if you have never accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then you're not included in this body of Christ. So it would be very easy to remedy that simply by praying this prayer. Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life. I confess my sins and ask for forgiveness. And with your help, I will begin a new life seeking you first. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And having prayed this and believing in your heart that Jesus is now dwelling in your heart, you are a member of God's household, and you are a dwelling place in which God lives by his Spirit. And with his Spirit, then, will be built into this holy temple that Paul is talking about here in these verses. Amen and amen.